the most curative treatment for heart failure is going to be a heart transplant. I say this as a reminder to keep in mind the goal of treating congestive heart failure. Most of the time, we won't be able to reverse what has already happened, short of starting over with a new heart. So our goal of treatment is to improve the clinical symptoms, which should also stabilize the condition and slow its progression, which reduces long-term mortality. Without adequate treatment, heart failure gets worse over time, and some people do get to the point of needing a heart transplant, which comes with its own risks and side effects. But we want to avoid getting to that point. And before we get there, there are many medical treatments to try first. For many diseases, we talk about the algorithm for treatment, which is the systematic way to think about our options and in what order to approach the steps. The algorithm for CHF treatment is similar to the treatment for many chronic diseases like hypertension or diabetes. So first, we'll get rid of iatrogenic causes. Iatrogenic means caused by healthcare, a side effect of another treatment that we provided. So evaluate the drugs patients are taking to see if anything could be causing the heart failure. Some examples include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or antiarrhythmic drugs or calcium channel blockers. If they are taking them, and if it's possible, stop these medications or try to switch to something else. Next, it's always important to talk to the patient about making lifestyle changes. Like we mentioned in discussing the pathophysiology of heart failure, conditions like hypertension and coronary artery disease lead to and exacerbate heart failure. So any lifestyle changes to lower the blood pressure, lower the cholesterol, and improve the overall health will be tremendously helpful here. So in particular, stop smoking, get help for alcohol or drug abuse, exercise more, and be at a more ideal weight. Uh, maybe restrict the salt in the diet to minimize fluid in the body. Lifestyle changes initiate a whole cycle of benefits where the person will feel better, leading to more activity that strengthen the heart and improve the underlying ideology of the condition. Now, number three, pharmacotherapy, targeting underlying ideology as well as heart failure symptoms. And by the way, by ideology, we mean the cause of the disease. So finally, here we go for the drugs. Since heart failure is the culmination of many diseases that affect the heart, it's important to find out what is causing it and try to treat that. So in choosing a drug, the best case scenario for us is finding one that treats the symptoms of heart failure and the underlying heart disease. So to illustrate this point, we will look closely at two classes of drugs commonly used in heart failure treatment, which are beta blockers and angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE inhibitors. Okay, beta blockers. Now the heart has beta receptors that allows it to respond to the sympathetic nervous system, which you can think of as the body's stress response. So think of what happens when you get nervous. Your heart rate goes up, right? So that is part of the stress response, and the adrenal glands release epinephrine and norepinephrine, which communicate with the beta receptors that can speed up the heart rate. Beta blockers interfere with this communication, weakening the effect of the stress response. Chronically downregulating the beta receptors lowers the heart rate in general, so we can think of beta blockers equals lower heart rate. Now, why is this a good thing? Now, lowering heart rate treats symptoms of heart failure because slowing down the contractions gives us a better chance of having good contractions instead of an ineffective ventricle pumping in over time to make up for lack of effectiveness slowing it down gives it time to fill up more regroup the muscles and have a better ejection fraction basically quality over quantity of the contraction now beta blockers also treat a variety of underlying heart disease for example in ischemic heart disease slowing down the heart rate decreases the heart's demand for oxygen improving the ratio of oxygenated blood to workload so the muscles are not as starving for oxygen. It slows down the progression of the ischemic heart disease. So beta blockers, as you can see, is the first line drug in heart failure treatment. Next, we have angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE inhibitors, which is used to lower blood pressure in heart failure. When heart failure compromises good blood flow to the body, the kidneys are really sensitive to this and they activate the renin angiotensin system, which ultimately raises blood pressure to compensate for the low flow. It makes the kidneys hold on to more water and tightens the blood vessels. This is like when the water pressure in a garden hose is too low. You keep turning the faucet to increase the flow and squeeze the hose to increase the pressure. 
the kidneys need to see a certain pressure of blood flow to be happy, thus making them in charge of this system. So as you can see, this is a bad idea from the perspective of heart failure, right? We got into trouble in the first place because chronic hypertension overloaded the heart and gave us hypertrophied ventricles. So compensating by increasing the blood pressure and volume will make our original problem worse. Angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, is a key player in this system. So we use ACE inhibitors to interrupt the pathway. This lowers the blood pressure overall and treats both the symptoms of CHF and the underlying hypertension. Now, beta blockers and ACE inhibitors are both first-line drugs for heart failure, and they have been shown to decrease mortality. They're also both considered drug classes, which means there are many specific drugs within each group with different side effect profiles. Now, another important class of drugs in CHF treatment is diuretics. These medicines basically increase the flow of urine in a variety of different pathways and basically flushes the body of excess fluid. This is like letting some cars off of the congested freeway to free it up a little bit, and this gives some relief to the heart. And symptomatically, this also relieves some of the edema from the backed up fluid. Now, other drugs that are commonly used include statins to lower cholesterol medically, so coronary artery disease and ischemic heart disease don't become worse. And then there are other antihypertensives for blood pressure, so on and so forth. Now, these are some of the most commonly used standard therapies for heart failure. Remember that each drug will have different side effects, and patients react differently to it. So depending on the patient's response and the original problem, different combinations will be used. If first-line drugs don't do the trick, there are other options that might be more aggressive and controversial. But if medical management ultimately fails altogether, we then consider surgical options, like an implantable device or heart transplant.